A warm greeting, today is Sunday, July 9, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this video, I would like to provide an update on the tropics in the Atlantic Ocean. Specifically, we will be discussing an area that has been identified by the National Hurricane Center, where there is a possibility of the development of a subtropical system over the next seven days. Of greater importance to the residents of the Caribbean, we are closely monitoring a strong tropical wave approaching the 45 degrees west longitude. Some models show this disturbance remaining fairly strong as it crosses over the northeastern Caribbean. In this video, I will be discussing the local effects expected in the Caribbean between Wednesday and Thursday, as well as the possibilities of development before it reaches the Caribbean or as it moves over waters southeast of the United States. First, I wanted to mention that the National Hurricane Center has identified an area in the northern Atlantic with up to a 30% chance of development over the next seven days. In this area, the development of some low-pressure systems is expected, which could acquire subtropical characteristics early next week. There is a possibility that we may see the development of a subtropical system that potentially could be named Subtropical Storm Don. The important thing is that, for now, it does not pose a risk to land areas. The tropical wave we are monitoring in the Caribbean region has shown continued development of thunderstorm activity along its axis over the past 24 hours. Weather models indicate that it will remain fairly strong as it approaches the Caribbean on Wednesday. However, the good news is that the conditions will not be entirely favorable for cyclonic development. Firstly, we have a stable air mass associated with a Saharan dust cloud moving through the Atlantic region. This Saharan dust will be a limiting factor for the cyclonic development of this tropical wave. On the other hand, fortunately, strong wind shear is also expected, which will protect the Caribbean Sea region. Similar to what we observed when Tropical Storm Brett approached and when Tropical Storm Cindy passed through the northeastern Caribbean. The Saharan dust cloud can be clearly seen in the following animation, where we can observe the dust cloud in red and yellow colors, remaining just ahead of the tropical wave. At times, this Saharan dust will interfere and limit thunderstorm development. Remember that the presence of Saharan dust is normal during the month of July, and although we saw little Saharan dust in recent weeks, a dust cloud from the Sahara emerged last week from Africa. Currently, it is one of the factors preventing the possible development of tropical waves originating from Africa during these days. Additionally, in the following image, you can see a strong trough located northeast of the Caribbean, which will generate strong wind shear as this tropical wave moves through the region, as well as westward wind shear in the Caribbean Sea region, which is typical of the El Niño phenomenon. The question is, why are we mentioning this tropical wave? The models forecast that it will bring significant rainfall and some gusts of wind to the northeastern Caribbean. Furthermore, in the long term, it could encounter more favorable conditions for organization as it passes over or near the Bahamas. It is important for the Bahamas and the southeastern United States to remain vigilant regarding this tropical wave, although at the moment, the National Hurricane Center has not identified this area as an area with cyclonic development probabilities. Let's see what the global models show about this tropical wave as it approaches the Caribbean. Take a look at the American model, which has a strong tropical wave arriving in the morning hours of Wednesday to the Lesser Antilles and then crossing over Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. We also have the European model, which shows a strong tropical wave crossing over the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic during Wednesday and Thursday, although, like the American model, it does not predict the development of a tropical depression. The German model also depicts a strong tropical wave arriving in the afternoon hours of Wednesday to the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, and then reaching the Dominican Republic on Thursday morning, but it also does not develop a tropical depression. Other models, such as the Canadian model, also show a strong tropical wave arriving in the northeastern Caribbean on Wednesday afternoon. There is a considerable consensus among the models that at least the tropical wave will arrive quite strong in the northeastern Caribbean. Therefore, the development of heavy showers and some winds exceeding 30 miles per hour is anticipated. However, we will continue to monitor closely in case we see any cyclonic development, as some members of the European model do show the development of a low-pressure system associated with this disturbance when it reaches the northeastern Caribbean and then, in the long term, near or over the Bahamas. In fact, the ensemble members of the European model have a 20-25% to chance of a tropical depression developing before it reaches the Caribbean. However, we are confident that the Saharan dust and the southwest wind shear will keep this system weak, and at the moment, I do not anticipate cyclonic development. I believe the chances of development should be better in the long term when it is located near the Bahamas. In terms of local effects, note that the GFS model is forecasting gusts of wind between 30 to 35 miles per hour that could affect the islands north of the Lesser Antilles and some of the American and British Virgin Islands. These winds could affect the region during the afternoon and evening hours of Wednesday or early Thursday morning. 
In addition to the wind, significant rainfall is also expected, affecting the northern half of the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic between Wednesday and Friday, with estimated accumulated rainfall between 30 to 50 mm, or the equivalent of 2 to 3 inches. It is important to stay tuned to the weather forecast bulletins because several tropical waves have affected this region, and some areas have saturated soils, which increases the risk of flooding for the middle of this week. Looking ahead, by the end of July, we will be attentive to some tropical waves emerging from Africa. Note that by the end of July, the ensemble members of the European model have up to a 30% chance of a tropical depression forming just south of the Cape Verde Islands. It seems that a strong tropical wave will emerge during the last week of July, and we will monitor it as it moves west-northwest across the tropical Atlantic. Well, that would be all. In summary, it appears that we will have the development of a subtropical storm in the waters north of the Atlantic, which should not threaten any land areas. On the other hand, we will closely monitor this strong tropical wave, which promises significant rainfall and some winds for the northeastern Caribbean. Although at the moment, cyclonic development is not anticipated, we will remain vigilant once it reaches the Bahamas region, as conditions in this area can occasionally be favorable for the development of a tropical depression. Well then, I bid farewell, and until the next video. I hope everyone has an excellent day.